Tonight, is Amazon getting into the live TV business? Small ad publishers have a friend in Google. Where did Tumblr's growth go? And MIT builds a transparent display. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 7 for January 21st, 2014. I'm Father Robert Balasser. Let's get right to the tech feed. Amazon.com may launch a paid TV service. The Wall Street Journal reported today that Amazon has approached entertainment companies about licensing their television channels for a new paid TV service similar to current cable and satellite TV, but streamed over the Internet. Amazon already offers TV shows and movies on demand through its Prime Instant Video service. The move is part of an industry push to offer live streaming TV online. Today, Verizon announced that they acquired Intel's OnQ technology, which is also built around the ability to stream television live. Not to be left offline, Google and Sony are also working on live TV streaming. Now, small publishers can sell direct ads using Google AdSense Direct. Previously, if an advertiser contacted a small publisher about placing ads, they were forced to go through DoubleClick for publishers which really wasn't worth it. This service from Google fills the gap. The ad publisher and advertiser work to, through AdSense Direct to set ad duration and price. And then the advertiser uploads the artwork and the ad publisher grabs the code. For this, Google takes a 15% cut and is only available in the United States. AdSense Direct directly competes with services like iSocket and Buy Sell Ads. Yahoo paid more than a billion dollars for the Tumblr social blogging site in May, in part because of its massive rate of growth. But since the acquisition, Tumblr's growth may have stopped. According to Comscore, Tumblr's users flattened for six months after the acquisition. A Tumblr spokesperson said, however, that Comscore didn't measure mobile or in-app traffic, so Tumblr's users' growth may be better than reported. Meanwhile, another survey of users conducted by Global Web Index also showed that Tumblr's users have plateaued, now smaller even than Google's Orkut social media network. We reported yesterday that Microsoft may have paid gamers to post videos promoting the Xbox One in exchange for cash without disclosing the payment to viewers. We said that we were waiting for Microsoft to clarify their involvement in the promotion, and today they did. The company issued a statement that said, in part, that the apparent gag order quote, relates to the agreements themselves, not the existence of the promotion, unquote. Still, these are essentially paid ads, and we believe that they should be disclosed as such. Coming up, a transparent display that uses nanotechnology instead of projection. Now, right now, I'd like to welcome Steve Kovacs, the senior tech editor at Business Insider. Steve, you wrote an article about how HP is pushing Windows 7 over Windows 8 in their new PCs. Now, Microsoft has been known to strong arm their OEMs, usually with a combination of attractive pricing for their newest operating systems and penalties for staying behind the curve. What has enabled this major break of HP from Microsoft's roadmap? I think it's a mix of things. Um, HP's uh, CEO, Meg Whitman, has been on the record in the past couple of months saying that she's not too uh, happy with the way Windows 8 is going. And, you know, the whole market itself, the PC market itself is pretty much imploding year over year. Last year was the worst year ever for PC sales. And a lot of that's due to Windows 8. People are frustrated. They're confused by it. They don't know how to work it. And so um, it's kind of like a trolley move on HP's part to say, you know, back by popular demand, we're bringing Windows 7 in and you can buy a Windows 7 machine for 150 bucks off. Uh, really, uh, you know, it's a, it's a jab at, um, at Microsoft while also kind of placating users who are a little frustrated with Windows 8. Yeah, I, I think that would be the question. Is this is this really just a response to what customers want, which is what HP is selling this as, or do you see some politic going on in the background? I see both. Um, you, you know, they're see, HP seeing their shipments decline uh, year over year, just like the rest of the market, and they're trying to figure out what's going to work. Uh, you know, they're making a huge push in Chromebooks, which also scares Microsoft a lot. You know, Microsoft is going very negative on Chromebooks. They have a whole website dedicated to bashing Chromebooks and, and comparing them to Windows 8. Uh, so it's a little bit of that, that and also a little bit of power play. And I think, uh, you know, HP was the first to do it. It's, it's, it's kind of fun to watch. And I, um, I bet we'll see Dell and others start doing it soon, too. Now, Steve, I'm going to ask you the question that no one else wants to answer. That is that PC sales are stagnant, market share is slipping, profit margins are slim. 
With competition from Android devices, the iOS juggernaut, and the recent rise in Chromebook sales, especially from HP, will Microsoft stay the course with their unified Windows 8 strategy, or will they reverse tact and give us a mobile and desktop operating system that's different? I think it's going to be a slight reversal. Again, we're going to have to see who the new CEO is and what his or her uh, strategy is. But I have the feeling with um, Bill Gates, you know, kind of running the show behind the scenes as chairman, um, we're going to see more of it staying the course. Um, you know, we've heard reports already that the so-called Windows 9 is in the works and it's going to fix um, a lot of the problems with the user interface people had. And I think we're going to kind of see this hybrid operating system uh, that defaults more to a desktop feel. Uh, but there will still be that option to kind of kick into the uh, tablet-y touch interface. Thank you, Steve. That was some great insight. And finally, right, a transparent display. How cool. This is not a projection or light-emitting diode embedded in a glass. This system developed by MIT uses silver nanoparticles, each 60 nanometers wide, on the glass. Right now, you're only able to see a blue image, but the researchers promised that they could add red and green for a full-color display. Another advantage of this system is that you have a wider angle of view. You don't have to be directly in front of the screen to see it. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm Father Robert Balasair. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.